Did you know that 27% of black households live below the poverty line as opposed to 8% of white households? For the next few minutes, we'll discuss the economic state of emergency in black America, among other issues. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and joining me today is G.K. Butterfield. He's a Democrat from North Carolina and chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congressman, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I wish we were here under better circumstances. Based on what I just said a few moments ago, there unfortunately are two Americas. There seems to be a black financial America and a white financial America, and there's a huge disparity between the two. First of all, let me thank you for allowing me to come on your program today and speak to these very important issues. They are the centerpiece of the agenda for the Congressional Black Caucus for the 114th Congress. Uh, I am indeed the, the chairman of the CBC for the 114th Just Congress. Just elected. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, we are proud to say that we are now the largest CBC in our history, 46 members, uh, 20 of those are female. Uh, we hail from 22 states and the District of Columbia and the Virgin Islands, uh, representing more than 30 million people. And the centerpiece of our agenda is the whole question of economic inequality. Uh, one out of four African-American households live in poverty. One out of three black children live in poverty. Uh, the unemployment rate for African-Americans is twice that of white Americans. And that's not a, a recent phenomenon. This has existed now for more than, more than 50 years. And so black America is indeed in a state of emergency. And, and black people all across America are looking to the Congressional Black Caucus and others for leadership. And so we're going to provide that leadership. Congressman, 2015 marks the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights uh, March, where out of that came a lot of civil rights progress, if you will, when it comes to education, when it comes to housing, when it comes to a lot of issues, if you will, that were designed to address a lot of these inequalities in our social system. 50 years later, are we better off as black Americans and as all Americans than we were 50 years ago? Well, in terms of electoral success, we are better off. I was part of the voting rights movement 50 years ago. August 6 of 1965, the Voting Rights Act was enacted into law, and that was a watershed moment. Uh, from that day forward, African Americans have become registered voters, and black people have been elected to office all across the land, including the Congress of the United States. But it's more to, to empowering the African-American community than electing people of color to office. And let's speak about that for a few moments. We have about a minute, 30, 30 seconds left. When you say empowering black Americans, what does that mean specifically? First of all, we've got to level the playing field. We've got to rid ourselves of discrimination in the workplace and in society. Uh, discrimination has no place in, in 2015. We've got to find ways of getting African-Americans to work. Uh, we've got to have good paying jobs. We've got to create jobs in America. And the, the whole new Republican pushback against domestic spending is hurting our community. And so we've got to create does, jobs. And, and, when, and to that point, does it mean investing in education so that uh, a black American has the same educational qualities uh, or qualifications as a white American? I mean, to be very specific, how do you... How do you uh, empower the community to be able to be at that level playing field. You empower the community by investing in the future in education and infrastructure of where you begin. Uh, you, we've got to have 21st century schools for not just African American children, but all children in this country. And, and unfortunately, we have school districts that are prospering and others that are not. Um, but black children in particular, and that's my interest uh, as CBC chair, is to make sure that black children receive a 21st century education and not be a part of the, the cradle to prison pipeline. Congressman Butterfield, we've got about 30 seconds left. Very quickly, one could make the argument that we have an African American president, uh, the economy is doing very well, things should be much better than what you just said a few moments ago. Where's the disconnect here in terms of reality versus versus fiction? The economy is doing well for some, but for too many, the economy is not doing well. So many African Americans and other Americans have been left behind. They are not a part of the recovery. Congressman G.K. Butterfield, Democrat from North Carolina, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.